It's known as the Craigslist for weapons, a website called armslist.com based right here in western Pennsylvania. Action News Investigates has learned the site is now under fire, the target of lawsuits from victims, reports from gun control advocates, and legislation from several senators. Investigative reporter Paul Van Oslo is live tonight in Jeanette with a closer look at this. Paul, what did you find out? Well, Mike, this unassuming building right behind me here in Jeanette is the headquarters for Arms List, one of the world's busiest websites for gun sales. Now, no guns are actually sold here. Instead, Arms List acts as a broker for thousands of gun dealers and private sellers. Court records show some of the people who bought guns off of Arms List were convicted felons, unable to pass a background check, and they used those guns to injure or kill others. Six years ago, veteran Boston police officer Kurt Stokinger was shot while trying to arrest an alleged drug dealer named Grant Headley. I was hit in the leg with the first shot. Um, and at that point, Mr. Headley began to run at me and he shot at me in between four or five more times. One of his partners applied a tourniquet to slow the bleeding, but the injuries prevented Stokinger from ever working as a police officer again. Luckily, I'm married to a, a woman that, uh, you know, stood by me and, and really held everything together. But it's created a great strain. Headley is a convicted felon, unable to legally buy weapons. The ATF traced the purchase of his Glock semi-automatic pistol to armslist.com, an online gun marketplace based in Jeanette. ATF found that the same gun buyer who supplied Headley also bought up to 60 other guns on arms list, many of which ended up on the streets. Jonathan Lowy is Stokinger's attorney and chief counsel for Brady United, the gun control advocacy group. Arms list was used as a, you know, essentially sort of a mega store for this trafficking operation to get their supply. Jonathan Gibbon is founder and CEO of arms list. When you hear about these types of cases, what goes through your mind? How do you respond? Well, those things are awful. They're just absolutely terrible. Stokinger and his wife sued Arms List, calling the site a haven for prohibited purchasers, illegal gun sellers, and the cause of significant shootings, gun crimes, and murder. But a Massachusetts court dismissed the case, citing the Federal Communications Decency Act, which gives websites broad immunity from liability. There are other cases. In 2012, four people died in a mass shooting at a Wisconsin spa. The shooter who killed himself was the estranged husband of one victim. Weeks before the shooting, a judge issued a restraining order that prevented him from having a gun. Days later, he bought a semi-automatic handgun through arms list that he used in the shooting, according to court records. It's a difficult day for us, but we will get through it. In 2018, a convicted felon killed Chicago Police Commander Paul Bauer. According to court documents, she bought the weapon through a gun trafficker who obtained it via arms list. Bauer's widow and the family of a Wisconsin shooting victim sued arms list among the multiple lawsuits against the website. How many of those suits have you lost? None. No, we've, we've always won uh, because we, we operate our website you know, the, the best way you can. Arms List has relied on the same defense used in the Stokinger case, Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, which protects websites from liability. Internet Seth Orenberg is a law professor at Duquesne. In the eyes of the law, they're no different than a Facebook or a Twitter. No different, right? They're just a neutral content provider, and they simply uh, facilitate a private sale and, and have uh, total immunity from, from any harms that come from that. More than a thousand licensed gun dealers use Arms List, and federal law requires them to conduct background checks. Arms List itself is not a firearm dealer, so it does not have to do any checks. She's a awesome little beast. Nine hundred, right? Yes, sir. That's good. Okay, here you go. An investigation by the gun control group Every Town for Gun Safety found Arms List posts more than one million ads a year from private sellers that do not require background checks. The study found nearly one out of every nine prospective buyers on the site could not legally possess a firearm because of their criminal history. When they say, you know, one out of nine prospective buyers would not pass a background check. Well, they're lying, they don't know that. 
Arms List does tell site users to comply with state and federal gun laws. In 2020, they began requiring users to pay a fee in an effort to keep criminals away. I mean, we do as much as really any website can do, you know, from people browsing, because there are always things people can do to obfuscate their identity. What I've seen is not nearly enough. Um, I mean, I haven't seen anything that prevents a convicted felon from going on the website and buying guns. Stokinger, the former cop, says he simply wants to make sure no more innocent victims die at the hands of a gun sold on arms list. The last thing I want is another police officer with the wife, a kid's family to go to work and get shot. And even more on top of that, I don't want to I don't want an innocent person being being victimized because of an illegal, illegally obtained gun. Last year, three U.S. senators filed legislation that would end the immunity protection for Arms List and other online gun brokers. The CEO of Arms List tells me he's not worried about Congress passing any law that would impact his business. Reporting live in Jeanette, Paul Van Osdall, Pittsburgh's Action News 4.